A good day to all of you. My name is Nipuni Marasekha and I'm here to present my research based on the investigation on changing the interval time and its impact on student hunger and concentration levels in classroom activity. As a teacher, I personally have experience in several instances that students seem to be distracted as well as having poor attention and uh, concentration abilities, especially during the second and third period. Many of the students, when inquired, they would say that they are hungry because they did not have a proper breakfast. Reasons include leaving early in the morning from home, as well as not having the appetite to eat food in the morning and having sports practices early morning. For my research, the literature review that was carried out enabled me to emphasize on several factors, which includes that skipping meals, especially breakfast, will have adverse effects on the memory and concentration since it affects the cognitive functioning of the brain. This in turn declines the performance and the concentration levels which are exhibited during the learning process. Further, children have smaller stomachs compared to adults, which means they need to have a snack at least within a period of three to four hours within the course of the day. The objective of this research was to investigate the effect of introducing a new interval time and analyze its impact on student hunger and concentration levels in the learning process within the classroom. Methodology. My research was an action research with the intervention of introducing a new interval time of 10 minutes after the second period, which is to be run for a period of one month. Within this interval time, the students will remain in the classroom and they will consume the food that they bring from home, along with the teacher from the second period will retain with them in the class. This will ensure that there is a true smooth transition to move in and begin the third period. The sample that I selected for my research include a stratified sample of 70 students from three different classes, grade eight, grade 10 and grade 12 each of them, they would have an equal distribution of academic proficiency levels, along with two thirds of the class total will be considered as the experimental group that they will be provided with the interval and they will consume the food within that time period, along with the control group where they will receive the interval. However, they will not be given the time to consume food given in that interval time. The data collection methods and tools that were used for my research include a questionnaire form that was to be given to both students as well as teachers before and after the intervention, along with pre-test and post-test through a questionnaire paper, uh, which consisted of 10 marks and given for a duration of 20 minutes. The data will be recorded based on the test course, along with the time period taken for them to complete the paper. In this slide, you can see a sample of the questions that I included in this question paper, which includes problem solving as well as simple mathematical skills reflecting on the concentration levels. These are some pictures which shows as to how the interval system was carried out. As you can see from the pictures, the students remain in the class and they're having their small snack along with the teacher also with them. Further, this is a picture of how the pre-test and the post-test was conducted and as well as the questionnaire forms being filled by the teachers. The data analysis methods that I have incorporated includes for the qualitative data from the questionnaires, I include percentage analysis and for the quantitative data, I incorporated student t-tests where the p-value, if it is less than 0.05, from the pre-test and the post-test course, from both the control and the experimental group, it will be considered statistically significant. And the coefficient of variance to build up the relationship between the test scores and the time taken with a R squared value greater than 0.05, considering to be statistically significant. The results and discussions. From the qualitative data analysis through the questionnaire, I was able to emphasize that 20% of the population stated that they did not have breakfast in the morning. And out of that percentage, 
they gave in several reasons to say why they were unable to have breakfast with 44 response rate saying they were leaving home early, 23 saying that they did not have the appetite to eat early morning, 9% stating that they were unable to purchase food in the morning, as well as early morning sports practices was another response given by them. From this questionnaire analysis from both students as well as the teachers, it was observed that especially during the second period, many of the students and the teachers noticed that students consume food with or without the teacher's permission, which reflects to say that they seem to be more hungrier in the second period. After the interval system was introduced, again from the questionnaire, the response of students was as follows, stating 25% stated that they were uh, feeling more focused in class and able to concentrate on the lesson, 35 feeling less tired and sleepy in class during the lessons in the third period, and 6% stating that they had more time for clubs and society work during the main interval, with 27% saying they had more time to consume food as well as play during the main interval. However, 8% of the population did state that there was no significant uh, change that they uh, observed after introducing the new interval system. From the teacher observations, especially during the third period, the teachers were able to state that they saw a slight increase with a response rate of 30 to say that the students did perform better after giving the interval. However, 22 responses also stated that there was no noticeable gain after the interval was introduced. From the quantitative data analysis, from the pre-test and the post-test, uh, it can be observed from the graph that the blue section states the marks that they obtained by the experimental group, and the orange bars indicate the post-test results, which shows that there is a shift with the results as well as a gain in the marks that they have obtained for the question paper. This is a summary of the statistical analysis from both the pretest and the post-test scores and the timing. The scatter graph which shows the correlation between the coefficient of variation of the experimental group before the intervention and after the intervention, as you can see from the graph, they do not really build a good relationship because the data is uh, distributed all over the graph area. But when segmented into four areas within the graph, we can see that uh, students seem to have been getting low scores as well as taking shorter time periods to answer the question paper before the intervention. And after the intervention, they have taken more time to answer the question paper and their scores has increased. A similar pattern was observed with the scatter graph from the control group as well. In conclusion from the research, through the questionnaire, after the intervention, a response rate of 62% stated positively to have increased their concentration levels. And there was a statistical significance, which was also evident from the uh, t-test student values, which stated, which was less than 0 0.05 from the experimental groups, especially with grade eight, grade 10, and grade 12, to show that there is a uh, statistical significance with the data. However, there was no relationship that could be established between the time period and the scores that the students have gained because the coefficient of variation was less than 0 0.5 with the R squared value of 0 0.0498 and 0 0.0282 for both the control group as well as the experimental group. Overall, for recommendations, I would suggest considering a larger sample group categorized with different academic proficiency levels among students to validate on test scores and time taken. Further, to have the analysis spreaded and also conducting more post-tests introduced during selective periods within the day, and also to have a three-day interval gap to observe any potential improvement in the concentration span. 
along with further quantitative analysis as well as qualitative analysis on student engagement and activeness during lessons after intervention. With this, I come to the end of my presentation. I would like to thank the 2020 to giving me the opportunity to present my research. Thank you very much.